Hello and welcome. Stefan here from the Schildwache Potsdam. Today joined by Roland Batzecker from Dimikator in this sunny Hedebü in the north of Germany. And I will start right away with uh, just asking you to just introduce yourself shortly. Okay, so yeah, as you said, um, my name is Roland, Roland Watzecha, and uh, I'm usually known as uh, Dimikator, which is kind of the name of uh, my school or project, which is research into historical martial arts and practice of historical martial arts. I started out uh, dealing with swords as a Viking reenactor somewhere in the 90s. I was thrilled by the fact that there was a sports system to fence with uh, blunt replica uh, weapons. And um, later on discovered HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts. And uh, I was thrilled that there were actual sources that informed us about how these historical weapons were used. Now, we don't have anything like that for the Viking Age. Of course, I had a weak spot for the Viking Age because I did that as a reenactor for many years. So um, it was only natural that I started to research into the armament of the Viking Age. And despite not having any written records, I think that uh, we can get some clues of how they may have fought. And so this is one of the focuses of my research. And the other one is, as most of you probably know, 133 Sword and Buckler. That, uh, this is uh, my passion. So you could say Sword and Shield. That's my thing. Okay, talking about Sword and Shield. So this weekend we were here fighting a lot with Sword and Shield for Absolutely. the for the Hedebu bouts. So what are the Hedebu bouts? Okay, the Hedebu bouts are kind of a, a kind of something coming full circle. As I told you, I was doing reenactment ever since the early 90s, and then later on when I discovered Hema, I just dropped all my historical kit and was fencing with fencing masks as we do most of the time in gyms and halls and then when I started to do research into the Viking Age again I picked up living history again and I tried to combine them so the Hedeby bouts are combining living history and the practice of historical martial arts so the idea is that we meet in an authentic environment that gives you a certain sense of history and some some feeling some um, some some impressions that you don't get in just a hall and you fence with like-minded people who are wearing period clothing and period equipment um, training historical martial arts so that's just a very special experience and it's not only the training we also sleep here we cook here we bake here we eat here so it's the uh, the full monty of historical living uh, historical martial arts and living history okay and what kind of weapons do we fence here well obviously as this is a viking place we're using viking armament so we're using swords we're using axes uh, spears and uh, very important those shields one uh, of which i have slung around my back the viking shield uh, is uh, more or less at the center of what we're doing here uh, mind you we're not doing any skirmish training or battles first off we are not enough people to do so because not all too many people train what we are training here um, we are using uh, the shield as a weapon and using it in, as informed by um, later treatises where it says uh, that uh, fuel and sensing is very important so this is how we use these shields and so it's most uh, mostly single combat that we are uh, training here Okay, and uh, as, as you already discussed with me, we train in period kits, but exactly. what kind of protection are you wearing doing this? Um, well, as my fingers show, not all too much. <laughs> 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 well, uh, I'm not wearing any um, modern gear and nobody here is supposed to wear any fencing masks or modern protection because uh, it would just be ludicrous to go through all the hassle of preparing authentic food and then uh, going onto the field putting on a fencing mask. So what we're doing here is, uh, you could say it's kind of training like they may have trained and they wouldn't have had um, big plastic gauntlets or fencing masks. So apparently this is just one particular sparring mode that we can do here. But if you want to wear authentic protection like a helmet or a chainmail, you're welcome to do so. Okay, maybe next time when I'm 
trained a bit more. I'm looking this. forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, um, you basically answered already the second question I would have for uh, which protection, is? which would have been, would you wear period protection like chainmails? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just chain, chainmail it. armor is just fine. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. okay. And of course, uh, all the fighting that we do here, um, it's first and foremost it's training. So it's not about winning, but uh, when we are fencing and obviously not wearing any uh, protection when my when my uh, sword point comes here um, and I could thrust and I have the plan to thrust, of course I apparently cannot. Um, but it could also be that my sword point ends up here uh, by accident or this is my full reach and then of course you will never know whether uh, or not that was a good hit or uh, if it wasn't. And that, But that's not the point here. We still sometimes discuss if something was a good hit or not. So. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is of course the flip side of not wearing um, protection. And if you would wear chainmail, and uh, um, I would do a cut here over your chest, then uh, it probably wouldn't do all too much uh, against <laughs> your protection. I should rather try to hit you in the neck, in the face, or in the arm where where, where you're not protected by chainmail. So it would be interesting to bring this factor in too. Yeah, same thing then later about tarnished face, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, because the weather is so sunny, I have to ask about this place. Why are we here in Hedebu and not <laughs> on some random field? I will show some footage, of course. And uh, what is so special here about this place? Okay, um, well, we're doing uh, Viking combat and this is the most Viking place you could get to in Germany, if not uh, in the whole world. Uh, this was the biggest Viking settlement or um, uh, uh, emporium in the north and um, uh, conveniently it's only a few hours drive from my place <laughs> and um, uh, it's actually not um, not 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 um, it wasn't that easy to install a fighting event here in Hadebu I actually had to apply for it and I had to do a presentation with a director who was um, quite skeptical because, uh, about any kind of uh, fighting displays um, but then she thought like this is a good approach to Viking Age combat and so we were allowed to do it and once I got the permission to run this event um, it was clear that it would be cool to do it exactly here because it's very Viking we, we <laughs> have houses yeah, yeah. Uh, we have ships we have a really nice scenery here and today we're also lucky with the weather I have basically one more question for mm -hmm. you and this is not completely regarding the fencing here but the fencing in general so uh, can you give us like two or three more tips on how to become a better fencer mm. okay um, well how much time do you have to spare um, <laughs> remain open-minded in, uh, in your complete career as a martial artist remain open-minded okay so there will be times when you believe your instructor knows it all and it's important to run to go through that phase but um, particularly in historical martial arts uh, we are only helping each other so remain open-minded and take the best from everything uh, that you find and um, that was one right <laughs> the second <laughs> fence fence as much as you can so when you have the chance to go places to fence against somebody who's not from your club and do it. It's really important. To, you will get uh, a lot of experience and impressions that you don't get inside your own club. So leave the, uh, the narrow boundaries of your club. Go out there and fence as much as you can. And it's the best of fun anyway. <laughs> and thirdly, between training sessions, train at home. Do your solo drills. It's really important. If it's only five minutes per day, it's really important, do it and it'll make you a better fencer. Thank you very much for, uh, especially these words, I have to train more at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... My pleasure. <laughs> it was really nice uh, to talk to you and uh, having this short interview with you. And of course that you invited us here to fence with you in this beautiful location, now for the third time already. Yeah, thanks and for coming. I'm looking forward for next year. Yeah, that'll be great. And of course I have to give a special thanks to Ute Dreves, who is a former director of this 
a museum here and uh, she made it possible that uh, Roland could start with this event here and also the current director Matthias Toplak who allows us to stay here as well. Another special thanks to you Roland. My pleasure. <laughs> and thank you next time. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this kind of content. If you want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe and share this video with a friend. If you want to support us even more, check out the description to buy us a coffee or for Martin a fencing book or check out our merch store. So I hope you enjoyed this and have a nice week. <laughs>